This video is powered by private internet access. With apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even Google Chrome, they've got your VPN needs covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CPU Modi here back with another video and today we're here with the TC Sunbao X3 SSD. Another drive direct out of China, right into our testing setup for us to have a look at here today. Now just like the rest of the cheap drives from the internet, we'll be putting it through all the tests that we do normally do here. But before we do so, let's actually take a look into who TC Sunbao actually is because we check out a lot of these unknown brands and really they're just kind of unknown. So let's have a bit of a look into the company before we actually look at the SSD. I mean, looking at the box right here, I'll forgive you for thinking this is just a King Gen drive that's been rebranded. I mean, we've seen quite a lot of these cheap SSDs come from the same manufacturer and they've just rebranded and changed these stickers over. I mean, the box is quite obvious there. Take a look at the front of the box. I mean, we've got the same logos, same markings, well, I guess slightly different logos, but essentially same font, same markings. Heck, we even get the same stupid little warning messages on this box but at least they say please the whole time instead of PLS, which is, I guess, a nicer thing to see. All in all though, uh, it does look like it is straight out of another factory and then just quickly rebranded and sold as TC Sunbao. However, thanks to the fact that it is a basic knockoff of a King Gen drive, we do find a lot of information about the company printed on the back of the box. So let's visit their webpage to find, oh, hang on, no, we don't actually find anything actually not even a 404 we got to the wrong page kind of nothing we actually visit the load balancing servers software welcome page so not even accessing the actual servers we're just accessing the load balancing service of the website Oh, but at least we have a phone number and at least we have an actual address right well actually going ahead and giving the phone number a bit of a ring the hotline appears to be a bit of a cold line where it doesn't actually call a number. You ring them up and you just get a little message saying that the number doesn't exist and you can't exactly call anyone. Sorry, the number you dialed is out of service. Sorry, the number you dialed is out of service which is a little bit of a problem. Honestly, with the website down and a phone number down, I was a little bit upset because you can't exactly find anything about this actual product and it really kind of puts a little bit of a downside with this particular company. So with a rocky start already off to a not so good start, we'll touch on this a little bit later because it does get even more dodgy, but we do want to take a look at the drive itself. In the design department, we are looking at a nice metal build with beveled edges and simple grey branding. Although that being said, the actual look and aesthetics of an SSD really doesn't matter to that many people out there. However, if you are looking at putting this on display, I guess it doesn't look too bad. Sure, it would have been nice just to have the little lightning bolt there, but I guess I can live with the rest of the markings right here. And I do have to say, uh, it is very nice in the design. Thankfully, though, this stupid sticker is around the back, so you don't have to look at all the regular information which is a bit of a thumbs up from me. I do have to say though it is very similar to other SSDs we've checked out especially from Samsung and King Gen and all the King type of drives um, so it is very much a rebrand in that department and keeps it really simple though. Now speaking of simple this is the only SSD that we've actually reviewed that I can open with my hands. It has little dimples to actually hold the two clamshell parts together but I was able just to sort of fling it open and then it opened right up. Sure it did take a few moments to actually get but this is one of the SSDs are opened without any tools. Sure, you need a Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew the little screws inside of it, but um, all in all, kind of a little interesting thing to note, obviously not going to be affecting the SSD in really any way, because once it's installed, everything's held down, so it's not going to be falling apart, but um, yeah, kind of a little interesting thing that I did notice in this cheaper SSD. Now, before we do jump inside of this guy, we do need to find out some more information about this thing, so we can actually compare what they claim to what we actually get in the real world. So jumping over to their, <laughs> that's right, they don't have a website. Well, actually going ahead and looking around the internet, I did pull up the seller's information that I did buy this drive from. It is claiming SA3, big whoop, as if it's really going to get to SA3 speeds. It has a claimed 560 by 385, again, kind of a big whoop situation right there, and an MTBF of 2 million hours. Nothing in this thing is going to be lasting two hours, so I don't know why they're really claiming that, but they also too claim a three-year warranty, and... 
Uh, yeah, the website's not there, so actually good luck trying to claim that warranty. And then the thought came to me, well, what if we just called the phone line and obviously as I did mention earlier in the video, nope, that went ahead and blanked out. So with two out of the three contact methods completely not able to be contacted, I thought, what if we just showed up to their headquarters? What if we took that address on the back of the box and just rocked up there? What if we could just go to their building? Well. No, that also too doesn't exist. So the actual uh, name or the, actually the address on the back of the box is not really right. So it actually says R-O-M instead of room. So the room number's already wrong, but it might just be a translation issue. So I just type word for word into Google uh, Maps. Nothing actually came up, uh, which was a bit of a downside. Now, I actually did track down where I think they actually are operating out of because of the fact that the box for this guy is basically identical to King Spec drives and other uh, King brand drives. I actually noticed a funny thing where all of the addresses on them were basically the same except for the first little bit. So one was in one room, one was in a different level. They're essentially all in the same building from what I could gather. So going on the King Gen website, copying their address and putting it straight into Google Translate or other Google um, well, translate and then into Google Maps. I kind of found where I think they're going to be working out of. Unfortunately, there is no uh, Google Maps Street View, so I can't exactly look at the building. However, we do find some sort of offices right here on a road that isn't really mapped, and I'm not exactly sure. Now, when I actually go ahead and actually key in the original address for this particular company, it doesn't actually resolve to an address. However, it thinks it can resolve to this Street View, which is kind of interesting. A Street View, which is not captured by Google, it's actually done by someone else. If we look down on the actual camera, we can see it's mounted to the car with suction cups and you can see the car, not something that Google keeps as a standard. And um, yeah, this is not exactly where they're actually working out of. So it was really disappointing to see that the address printed on the back of this box didn't even actually resolve to anywhere. It was when I actually looked for another website looking through King Gen itself, it resolved to this bloody place that I can't even pronounce. <laughs> And it's just really not that great of a place. I mean, you'd probably have more luck flying to China, getting off the aeroplane, just throwing that SSD out into the public and hoping someone throws a working one back at you because trying to track these guys down is just about near impossible. Now, yes, I could get in touch with uh, King Gen, so that was fine there, but um, no one wanted to tell me what was going on with TC uh, Sunbao, so that was a little bit of a problem there. All in all, uh, yeah, warranty status and company status is like a 0 out of 10. Anyway, continuing on with the, a little bit of a problem with this particular drive, if we look at the listing that Amazon claims a 95 gram weight for this guy, and if we rip out our Woolies drug spec scales, we find that it's only 45 grams. So I'm not exactly sure where the rest of this weight actually goes. 45 grams is basically your standard for most SSDs out there. I've only seen a couple SSDs that were like really jammed full of chips and made out of thick metal that was more than 50 grams. So so 95 grams, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, and the lies continue to come along with this particular drive. For instance, the regulatory information isn't really true, uh, there's no FCC listing that I can actually find for this drive, so that FCC logo is basically, as far as I can tell, uh, fake. Um, the European conformatory logos are also too not real, with the little center line slightly off, I like took a photo and then drew a grid over the top, not exactly correct right there. Literally all the regulatory information is not exactly real. The ROH compliance is also to not exactly so compliance right there. So as far as I can tell, all they've done is gone on Google Images, found the most common regulatory pictures and just like stuck it on the back of their box. Now I will give them the benefit of the doubt because they are just rebranding other companies' SSDs. There's a very high chance that all these uh, informations are true. It just so happens that the FCC listing is for a different SSD or a different model or something like that. So. I'm sure it's okay, but it's really hilarious to see a product that has all these regulatory informations, and when you actually dive deep into them, all of them are fake, which is kind of funny to see. Now, let's say you're stupid enough to actually buy one of these drives. Oh, hang on a second. Anyway, well, actually ripping these drives open, uh, we do go ahead and find ourselves actually some really decent internals. Yes, we get ourselves some DRAM. So this is a Micron chipset, the D9MNT, which is a one gigabyte DDR3 module, and it resolves to part number, get ready for this, MT41J64M16JT-15E colon G. 
lock that in your memory banks because you're gonna have to remember that a lot. Either way though, this is an obsolete part, but it is still nice to see that we do get ourselves some DRAM cache, which is really nice there. But you may be thinking, well, why are you so happy about DRAM? Well, in short, DRAM for SSDs isn't actually a cache. Rather, it's mainly used for mapping kind of data and also to use for bits of other uh, data on the SSD. But a lot of people think that putting a piece of RAM on your SSD is gonna allow the computer to write to the RAM, then to the actual uh, SSD, which will be faster. But in reality, that's not exactly how it all works. Now, I do have a more in-depth video onto DRAM and that kind of stuff coming along the lines, but essentially to break it down into really simple terms, an SSD stores all the data on the flash modules, but needs to know where that data actually is. So when it gets requested by the computer, it can quickly access it and send it on its way. A lot of SSDs just store this map essentially in the, um, well, flash itself, which as we found in that video right there, flash memory is way slower than DRAM. So storing that mapping data in the DRAM allows it to be much more fast. Again, yes, there's a lot more that you could get into this topic, but on a very basic surface level, it's just there to help access the data, not necessarily as a caching drive. Moving on, we also do get ourselves a Silicon Motion SM2258G controller, which is obviously paired up with that DRAM cache right there, or DRAM package right there, not really a cache. And uh, we also have no idea what this memory right here is. I did my best to try and find the actual model number printed here, but honestly, I have no idea what brand makes this flash. Again, please let me know down in that comment section if you know who makes this flash, but there's no branding. The actual model numbers resolve to like a tap here in Australia, so I can't exactly find anyone selling one of these mem memory modules. And there's also two no internet uh, forums that are talking about these memory modules. So. Yeah, that's a little bit dodgy there. But enough getting wrecked by dodgy parts and stupid branding and that kind of stuff. It is time to get into the performance. And looking crystal disk info, we do find ourselves a brand new SSD, which at least was nice to see. And we do see that it has some features like trim enabled and the values that are being reported are okay. Although I found it to be five degrees warmer temperature reporting than other SSDs in the system. Whereas SSD was 35 degrees, this guy was at 40. Don't know why, but it just happened to be like that. And jumping into our crystal disk mark, we actually get really decent numbers with 520 megabytes per second by 362 megabytes per second on the reads and then also two writes. Uh, it isn't actually too bad. And compared to other crystal disk mark numbers from other SSDs, even from reputable manufacturers, it isn't too bad. Sure, it's not a 500 by 500 maxing out SATA speeds, but at the same time, it is definitely a lot better than other similarly priced cheap SSDs. Looking at real world file transfers, from Windows 10, we do find that actually it isn't too bad. However, we do need to keep in mind that these initial kind of jumps are more to do with Windows 10 rather than the actual drive itself. Atto and HD Tune also do back up our synthetics and also to real worlds. And then finally looking at our real world load times into video games, we find that they are pretty decent for SATA based SSDs. Not as fast as an NVMe drive, but also to not as slow as a SATA hard drive. And again, touching on our FPS here, not affected as this drive didn't have any loading or lagging or stuttering problems, FPS in games, again, basically unaffected. And looking at our leaderboard, this guy slots in nicely at number 13, just beating out the crucial BX500 120GB drive, which isn't too bad at all. However, where things get really bad, comes to our unscientific dodginess graph. Now I'm in two minds about this dodginess graph. For one, if I just look at the SSD in a vacuum, if we ignore the fact that we can't even find where the factories are or who makes this thing or get in contact with anyone, just looking at the drive itself, it's not actually that bad and would score maybe a five, maybe a six out of 10 because sure it has a bit of a sketchy piece of flash, but the controller and DRAM package are nice and performs very well. However, when we factor this in as a whole experience and the company and the product and everything it is the highest scoring thing getting well over 9,000 on our dodginess graph. It, it, it can't even get a 10 out of 10. It is way worse than 10 out of 10 because as far as I can tell, unless someone else can correct me, T, uh, TC Sunbow doesn't actually exist or if they do exist, you can't contact them. And if you can't contact them, then they basically don't exist. If you need to get your three year warranty validated, there's no one there to pick up the phone on the other end except for a computer that tells you the phone number is no longer valid. Sure, the internal components that you actually get in the hand aren't exactly too bad, but then again, it is something that, well, I'm not exactly overly impressed for an entire experience. There's no contact methods, the website is down, the address is not real. I'll leave an update in that description box if the um, website comes back up online or the, um, well, the phone number starts working again, but, um, 
all in all, nothing really that good is actually happening here and gets well over 10 out of 10 for our dodginess score. And that quickly leads us to the question of should you buy it? And I'm pretty sure you can guess what the answer is going to be. Definitely no. Um, usually, again, with these cheaper drives, I try and say, hey, you might want to grab it for a scratch drive or for putting a whole bunch in RAID because you don't care about them or just something that is cheap and easy to use. But in this case, because there's no company to even try and contact down the line, it's really just not worth spending your time or money on. Anyone that I try to deal with actually selling this thing seem to have just vanished. It seems to be that if you deal with TC Sunbow, you, just like the company, also to completely vanish along with everything to do with it and just let people go ahead and buy it. Which then brings us to the TLDW of this video. The TC Sunbow drive is an interesting mixed bag full of surprises which aren't exactly always the best thing to see. With a box that resembles one from King Gen without the atrocious grammar errors, for the most part anyway, and also to a bunch of logos, addresses and phone numbers and also to websites that don't actually resolve back to anything. Breaking into the drive we do find ourselves a Micron DRAM, which is actually not too bad right here, with a silicon motion controller and unfortunately unknown flash. If you've seen this flash before, do let me know down in the description box, but as per for performance though, it isn't actually too bad. Sure, it's not blowing us away with huge numbers right here, but definitely not too bad coming in at plus 500 megabytes per second in our real world testing. But the problem definitely comes in on the support side. Sure, the drive itself is okay, but anyone who's dealt with them or tries to to deal with them just vanishes and if you do want to grab one you can find it down below but it's really interesting to see that the seller I bought from is now completely gone from Amazon which is really a bit of a worry right there and actually anyone else who I've dealt with in this process of making this video also too has completely vanished from my inbox. I mean it's interesting to see that we get an error 404 page on the Amazon site when I try to go back to the seller as always note down who sold me stuff and it's also too interesting that when we go to the TC Sunbow site it just goes ahead and actually resolves to a load balancing site. It's almost as if China is trying to, hang on, someone at my window. 